Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Today, we are continuing on with our four-week series on title insurance and how that relates to real estate. And joining me is Matt Hudson with First American Title. Welcome, Matt. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad to have you. And we are continuing on. So if you missed last week's episode, you're going to want to go back and catch it because what we did is we talked about what is title insurance and how does it work. So we covered the the very basics of it. Um, so if you if you missed it, go back and check it out. And today we're continuing on and talking about the role of the title company throughout the real estate transaction and then into um, into the closing. So um so yeah, so so we're gonna we're gonna continue on with that. So the last episode we talked about the lender's policy um, and the owner's policy and um, you know what those are and, and and how and when we get the title and title company involved. But but how does that like where does the title company fit into the the whole real estate transaction process? I think a lot of times clients, whether you're listing your home for sale, you know, selling your home or purchasing a home. You don't even realize there's a title, you know, title company We're in, the background. in the background. Yeah, you yeah. do a lot in the background. Yeah. So, so give us a little bit of insight as to what does that look like. Right. So, so, so let's say uh, you've just met with your client. They're yeah. going to list their property. You've ordered a pre-title from my company. Mm-hmm. We've gone and reviewed the uh, the public records to show you know that seller is actually the seller and they have the rights to right. sell that property. Right. <laughs> and then buyer comes along. Um, submits an offer, purchase agreements accepted, and then you send the purchase agreement over to me. And that what we're going to do is we're going to prepare a title commitment uh, showing that we propose to insure this new buyer so long as all of these requirements are met, which is sign a deed, make sure the liens are paid off, pay off any old mortgages, get homeowners association information, check the water billing, taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And then yep. we're going to compile that and, and put it in our computer, and we're going to wait for the buyer's clear to close. Yes. yes, yes. So one thing I want to mention, because that is a very good point, and I, I don't think everyone does this. This is part of my standard process when I'm listing a home, is putting in the order for preliminary title. So that just means that before we have the actual buyer, we're submitting and having you get started on that process of checking for any liens and making sure that that seller has the right to the property. And the reason that that I know like we all like that it's done preliminarily before you have a buyer is so that once you have that purchase agreement, then you can move right We're through the go. process We're because there go. are times when something comes up, a seller has no idea something was inadvertently put on their title. Um, it was a mistake. It was it was a clearly a mistake, but it's things that can get cleared up and taken care of and it doesn't slow down the process once we have a buyer because you know when we accept those purchase agreements and it says hey you have 30 days to close well if there's a title issue that needs to be cleared up from right. from you know previous whomever you know then you know it's nice to have that all done and taken care of so we're not eating into the time that's needed for the actual transaction right so right. yeah that that pre-title gives us a head start to yep. know what to, to know what we're working with right you know if if a buyer came along with a cash offer and submitted that purchase purchase offer and says, "I want to close by the end of the week," yeah, um, we've already got it ready to go. Yeah, we've, and you and you can do that. I know people are surprised, like, "What?" You could, but yeah, with cash, yeah. you can as long as you've you know you have the things done and you're ready to go, mm-hmm. then yeah, move forward. So, but most purchases, although in the last couple of years we've seen a lot more cash purchases, but. But typically, most purchases are using um, a third party. You know, there's funding, there's a lender involved. And so, you know, that's when you said, wait for the clear to close. And then what happens? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, it, well, let's uh, let's back up a little bit okay. and go to the get to the clear to close. So what the mortgage company is going to ask us at the title company is they're going to ask for the, the title commitment, which is the commitment to issue that title insurance policy. We're going to coordinate with that mortgage company, giving them our wiring instructions, a closing protection letter, um, E&O policy, boring stuff. Yeah. So once we get that <laughs> Again, all- Again, not necessarily boring. Right. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. But then um, once all that's ready to go, then, then normally we, as a title company, 
we're going to act as a settlement agent as well. We're going to facilitate the closing. I'm going to either come out myself or send one of my experienced closers to come out there and go through the closing documents. So uh, let's say we've got that clear to close. The mortgage company, what they do is they're going to have us sign their documents for them. They're going to send it over to our title mm -hmm. company. We're going to make sure all the numbers match, the mortgage company numbers match our numbers. And then we're going to go to the closing table. Yeah. So, so the big stack of papers that, you know, that you see when you go to the closing table, if you're the buyer, especially you have a bigger stack because there's the real estate documents, right? Those documents that transfer the real property from one owner to the next. But for a buyer, as you mentioned, there's a stack of paperwork that comes from the lender. And that is so that that buyer can take out their mortgage and all the documents that go along with it. So those aren't the title company's documents. Those come directly from the lender, and, but you're experienced and knowledgeable in those documents, and so you can help guide a buyer through them and explain what the different documents are that they're signing. Right, right. Yeah. So on on the buyer side, we're gonna we're gonna sign a closing disclosure, and that's gonna show all the numbers on the transaction, what the mm -hmm. mortgage company charges, what the title company charges, tax prorations that go back to the seller any setup fees or anything that the homeowners association may have paying out the real estate commissions to the yeah. realtors <laughs> and then we're yep. and, and acting as that settlement agent we're going to have that closing disclosure signed collect money from the buyer and, and what is showing due collect money from the mortgage company and and then we're going to distribute out we're going to pay the old mortgage off we're going to pay the real estate companies we're going to pay the taxes the homeowners association and then we're going to go through real estate documents and Obviously, we're going to sign a deed, and that's going to transfer title from the buyer to the or from the seller to yep. the buyer. And then there are a couple other documents too that we have that are going to go to the local municipality. We have a property transfer affidavit that that's going to tell the local tax collector, or the township, village, city, mm -hmm. who the new owner is, as well as file homestead forms because we have homestead in Michigan if it's our primary residence um, that we occupy and live in. It's in most municipalities there's a little bit of a property tax break. Yes. It, yeah. That that's those are the important papers, right? The property transfer affidavit and the homestead exemption. You want to make sure if it's your person, your principal residence, that you're getting that filed because it is. You you definitely do see a discount in your taxes, and that's what it is. It's a discount because there's the the, the tax rate, but because it's your primary residence, like you said, most municipalities are giving you a break on that. Yes. Yes. So, a separate millage rate or yes. taxable amount. A separate separate millage rate for a homestead versus a non-homestead and you may yep. see uh, on your tax bills what you would see a state equalized value versus a taxable value and the taxable value is what you base your millage rates off on the homestead or non-homestead rates um, yeah and we can we can actually probably do not in this series but we could do you know a whole nother episode yeah. and you know walking through that and how the the millage rate works and and, yeah, and that piece of it and taxable. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah taxable definitely. value yeah we've yeah. got some ideas yes, going. yeah there we go yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah so yeah so it is and um you know one of the things that i wanted to to say about the 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 closing process and the title insurance is yeah there i mean i think i have mentioned it but there's a lot there you know as you mentioned a number of the things that you do um and, and when you said boring e and o for for those of you who don't know what that is it's errors and omissions and not only does I, I, really i think every piece that's involved in real estate has this errors and omissions insurance piece right it's because you know sometimes you know uh an i is not dotted or a t is not crossed or there's something and it's just and it's it's not um a blatant mistake it's just a, a little an you know error. clear a yeah. little error so just to make sure that that can be resolved and that it's not you know, infringing on. So it's boring, but it's still something, again, just like we talked about in the last episode, there's all these little pieces that give you assurances, right? right. Assurances that the transaction, um, you know, what you think happened with transferring or purchasing a property, it has happened and all is good. Yes. So, yeah. 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 And so with, uh, along with my documents that the title company, we had, we have, uh, the seller sign an owner's affidavit that attests they have not sold the property to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. stop by the bank and taken out a mortgage <laughs> right. or an equity loan on the way over, yeah, right? Way yeah. over that we didn't know about. Yeah, and uh, and is going through the the loan documents. 
we will go through the loan documents on behalf of the lender as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that signs the note, which is the contract to repay the amount borrowed. We'll sign the actual mortgage document. And, and that that's kind of a term that gets um, mixed up in the business is we want to look at the mortgage and the loan. The, in my mind, the mortgage is a 15-page document that gets recorded in the county. <laughs> that, that's where my mind right. goes. But other people may think the mortgage is, is the whole loan. So we want to look at credit liability versus title. So whoever signs the note, they're responsible to pay that loan back. Whoever signs the mortgage is acknowledging that there's a note against the property. <laughs> so that that's what that means in a nutshell. Um, and, yeah. And then... After the closing, we get everything signed. We provide copies. Uh, we take in the money from the buyers and the mortgage company. Like I said, we cut yep. checks or issue wires or ACH credits um, yep. as long as everybody has their correct information. Yep. Yes. <laughs> the, the routing numbers and, and account numbers, we can, we can send the money out uh, electronically. And we are slowly moving to a more electronic closing mm -hmm. uh, format. Uh, uh, right now, my company can we can close a cash sale completely 100% online. Uh, some people like the old-fashioned, traditional sit down at a table. Buyers and sellers get to look each other in the eye, right. and shake hands, <laughs> and tell each other about the you know the ghosts in the attic and everything yeah. else. But um, it, it, I will say, the traditional way of doing things is is still my favorite. It's a lot of fun, you know, to get every, especially if it was a good transaction and everybody's pretty excited so it's nice to be able to share stories or oh hey i didn't mention this about the house or here's some little quirk that you might want to know and so it is kind of nice but but like you mentioned there's there are a lot of other ways now that we can close um you know a transaction and sometimes i mean it started a few years ago that uh, when we couldn't go inside of some of the buildings and so we you know or once we could start to you know come back inside the buildings we had to limit how many people were together so sometimes buyers can close in one location sellers can close in another location and then the paperwork is all merged together um after the fact um and then uh i know sometimes we have like you know a seller is uh on vacation. I've had this before. They're going to be on vacation and I can't make it in for the closing. And so what are some of the options for that? Yeah. Huh. So, so, um, we, my company has a, what we call a RON, which is a remote online notary system. So anywhere in the world, if you've got a strong internet connection, uh, yeah. we'll schedule an appointment with the online notary. They will, uh, log on through a secure video chat conference. The online notary will have some questions, a questionnaire to ask to verify identity. Right. Um, you know, um, kind of a little little tricky thing that I don't know if anybody uh, listening has ever had uh, um, gone through a loan application where they ask you these questions and you're like, where, where did they find this information from? <laughs> and, and that's used to verify your identity, yeah. usually on record with the, with the state or, or via credit. Um, and once they do that online uh, online signing, documents get uploaded back into the system, mm -hmm. then we can print them out, make copies or email or send out through a secure portal, uh, send out the money and, and basically nobody has to come to the closing. I've, I've yeah, I, I know I've had cl clients love this process. They've done this through through with you and or through yeah. First American Title and you know, they just thought it was the greatest thing. So it was yeah, a yeah. nice, easy process. And, you know, especially I've had some right work from home and they were like, ah, they didn't want to take the time off of work to go to the closing. So they just uh, used their, their lunch break or, you know, to, to yeah. walk through it online. So, yeah, yeah. So technology, I mean, there, there are some definite positives to it, uh, can make, it can make life easier, yeah. but it can also bring up some, uh, you know, some issues as well when we talk about the wire transfers and fraud and in a couple of episodes we are going to be talking about that so um, you're going to want to stay tuned for for that one so in two weeks we'll be talking about fraud um in as it relates to yes, title yes. insurance hot, and wires hot, yeah. hot topic yes yeah. hot very topic. hot so <laughs> so but that's uh but that kind of gives you an idea is there anything else that that did we miss anything as far as how the title insurance is involved or closing process i Feel I like think we've, that we've pretty much wrapped that yeah. wrapped it up. I, um, you know, we we uh, start with a title commitment and a research of the property, and we end with uh, handshakes, checks, and a full stack of signed documents. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great it's a it's a great feeling once you get to that closing table and and through that. Right. So, um, 
So yeah, but if you do have any questions, if there's maybe something, you know, through this process, feel free to drop it in the comments or send us a message and we'll be happy to get your questions answered. And then also, if there's other title topics, even though we do have a couple more episodes part of this series, but if there's other title topics that you're interested in, Matt and I would be happy to do another episode or series to make sure that we're getting your questions answered. So don't uh, don't be afraid to send those in to us. So um, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next week. We're going to be continuing on. Next week is actually a very interesting episode because it's ways to take title or hold title. You may not have realized that there's options. And a lot of times people don't know that there are options until they get to the point where they're purchasing a property and they're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be talking next week about ways to hold title. So stay tuned and learn more about that. Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you, Matt, for joining us. Glad to be here. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.